Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. One of the most striking physical characteristics of East Asian populations is undoubtedly the eyes. When most people think of Japanese, Chinese, Koreans or Mongols from Mongolia, they usually recall the slanted eyes, a common feature among these populations. This characteristic is both beautiful and unique, present in almost all peoples from this region. In this video, we will uncover the origin of East Asian eyes, exploring their roots from both a creationist and evolutionary perspective. If you are curious about this fascinating topic, keep watching and learn more about this distinctive feature. Don't forget to leave your like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with others who are interested in this intriguing mystery of East Asian eyes. The Mystery of Asian Eyes what is their origin? The most prominent physical trait among East Asian peoples is, without a doubt, their beautiful eyes, which capture the attention of many in other regions, especially in the West. This visual trait, predominantly associated with Asia, is an unmistakable cultural and physical hallmark of these populations, particularly in East Asia. Surely, at some point, you've wondered about the origin of the so-called slanted eyes of the Orientals. Scientifically, this feature is known as the epicanthic fold. But where exactly does this common and peculiar trait come from? To satisfy this curiosity, I decided to make this video addressing this genetic question. I'll explore both the biblical creationist perspective using sacred texts to explain this view and the evolutionary approach which also offers a scientific explanation for the emergence of this trait. So now, let's dive into the explanations behind this intriguing physical characteristic. But what exactly are epicanthic folds? An epicanthic fold, or simply epicanthus, is a fold of skin on the upper eyelid that covers the inner or medial corner of the eye. However, there are variations in how this characteristic manifests, the presence of partial or light epicanthic folds is also described in specialized literature. Various factors influence the formation of these folds, including ancestry, age, and even certain medical conditions. Without a doubt, the ancestral trait of the ethnicities that possess this feature is fascinating and carries a unique genetic history. As for the etymology, the term epicanthic fold comes from ancient Greek, where Epi means above and canthus refers to the corner of the eye, with the Latinized form being epicanthus. Thus, the word precisely describes this fold that occurs above the corner of the eye. This trait is widely recognized, especially in East Asian populations, and raises much curiosity about its origins and variations around the world. The phenotypic classification of eyes with epicanthic folds is often perceived as homogeneous, with many believing all these folds are identical. However, there is subtle variation among them. These variations have led to the identification of four main types of epicanthic folds. While they appear visually similar, there are small distinctions that set them apart. The first type is the epicanthus supraciliaris, which extends from the eyebrow and curves towards the lacrimal sac. The second, is the epicanthus palpebralis, which starts just above the superior tarsus and extends down to the lower border of the eye socket. The epicanthus tarsalis originates in the upper eyelid fold and merges with the skin near the medial canthus, being the most common type among East Asian populations. Finally, there is the epicanthus inversus, which extends from the lower eyelid skin over the medial canthus and reaches the upper eyelid these subtle variations highlight the diversity within a phenotypic feature often regarded as uniform. Now, addressing the origin of the epicanthic fold, we begin with the Darwinist explanation and its evolutionary viewpoint. I want to make it clear that although I am presenting this perspective, personally, I do not subscribe to it. I respect those who adopt this view, but for various reasons, I don't share this belief. That said, let's look at the evolutionary explanation according to Darwinism. The epicanthic fold is often associated with higher levels of fat deposition around the eyeball. 
it is believed that this layer of adipose tissue offers greater insulation for the eyes and nasal sinuses against the effects of cold, particularly in freezing winds, being considered an evolutionary adaptation to cold climates. Additionally, it is suggested that the fold itself might provide protection against snow blindness. While this trait is found in Southeast Asian peoples and many associate it with the descent of ancestors adapted to cold, the presence of the epicanthic fold in various African populations raises questions. In this context, it has been proposed that in some regions of Africa, the fold may protect the eyes from excessive ultraviolet light exposure, which is common in desert and semi-desert areas. However, this explanation has its limitations as it does not account for why not all African peoples living in similar climatic conditions display this trait. If it were a universal adaptation to hot climates, it would be expected that all inhabitants of these regions would have this fold, which weakens the credibility of this evolutionary hypothesis. This question remains open, showing that the origin of the epicanthic fold is still not fully understood. Continuing the discussion, the exact evolutionary function and origin of epicanthic folds remain uncertain. Several scientific explanations have been proposed, including random genetic variation, natural selection, and possibly even sexual selection. It has also been suggested that it could be an evolutionary adaptation to desert environments or to high levels of ultraviolet radiation, as found in high-altitude regions like the Himalayas. Dr. Frank Poirier, a physical anthropologist from Ohio State University, has stated that the presence of epicanthic folds among East Asian peoples is often attributed to evolution associated with tropical climates or extreme cold. However, he argues that these explanations alone are not sufficient to account for the broad distribution of this feature both in East and Southeast Asia. Additionally, he notes that the epicanthic fold also appears in other population groups, such as certain African peoples. Dr. Poirier suggests that the presence of the fold may be linked to pleiotropic genes, which control more than one trait or function in the body. Despite this genetic hypothesis, he did not offer a definitive explanation for the origin of epicanthic folds, leaving the mystery surrounding this feature still without a conclusive answer. Now, turning to the origin of phenotypic traits from the perspective of biblical creationism, we can explore how this view explains characteristics like slanted eyes, a striking aesthetic feature among East Asian peoples and also observed in some African populations. Interestingly, there are African groups with slanted eyes very similar to those of Asian peoples, highlighting certain gaps in the Darwinian explanation. The evolutionary theory struggles to provide a definitive explanation for the origin of this physical trait in different regions of the world. From the creationist explanation, based on biblical texts, we find a different approach to the genetic diversity of humanity. Biblical creationism proposes that all peoples were created by God from a common ancestor, which includes phenotypic diversity. According to this view, genetic variations that result in traits such as slanted eyes are part of God's intentional design, rather than the result of random evolutionary processes. Creationism also relies on genetics and ancestry to explain differences between ethnicities, but in a way distinct from evolutionary theory. For creationism, these characteristics are seen as variations that were present in the human genetic code from the beginning, without the need for evolutionary adaptations to the environment. Thus, slanted eyes, observed in both Asian and African peoples, are seen as a beautiful expression of the original diversity created by God. According to the biblical creationist view, the trait of slanted eyes and epicanthic folds observed in East Asian peoples are physical features given directly by God. Just as light skin color is a hallmark of Europeans, slanted eyes are a unique and beautiful physical hallmark of Asian peoples. In the creationist perspective, these characteristics are not the result of adaptations to climate or environment, but rather inherent traits of each ethnic group's ancestry. Biblical creationism rests on the idea that genetics and ancestry are the main factors explaining differences between ethnicities. In this sense, 
East Asian peoples have slanted eyes because this is a hallmark of their ancestral heritage passed down through generations, a symbol of their ethnic identity. It is important to emphasize that, according to this view, creationism does not attribute the development of epicanthic folds to climatic factors such as extreme cold. After all, many other populations, such as Europeans from cold regions, according to evolutionary theory, should also have developed this physical trait as an adaptation to the cold, but did not. This raises questions about the evolutionary explanation, which struggles to justify why only certain groups exhibit this characteristic. In contrast, creationism offers an explanation based on divine creation, where physical characteristics are seen as specific traits of each ethnicity, inherited through genetics and ancestry, without the need for environmental adaptations. In this way, the diversity among peoples is an intentional expression of God's creation, and each ethnicity carries its distinctive marks as part of its divine heritage. As I mentioned earlier, it is important to note that epicanthic folds and slanted eyes are not exclusive to East Asian peoples. Several other populations around the world also have this physical feature, challenging the idea that this trait is a unique marker of a single region or ethnic group. Among these populations, we can mention several African tribes that share this characteristic. For example, the Khoisan people of Southern Africa also exhibit epicanthic folds. In addition, many Nilotic peoples who inhabit parts of Sudan, Kenya and Uganda have eyes resembling those of East Asian peoples, such as the Chinese, Koreans and Japanese. Another example is the Cushitic peoples, which include black ethnic groups in Northeast Africa and who also display this trait. These examples make it clear that having slanted eyes is not exclusive to Asians. It's a physical trait that appears in various regions of the world, including hot and arid areas, such as those inhabited by many African peoples. Darwinian evolution struggles to explain why some African populations have this characteristic, while others, living in regions with similar climatic conditions, do not. This point emphasizes that the presence of epicanthic folds in different ethnic groups worldwide cannot be attributed solely to environmental factors such as extreme cold, as some evolutionary theories suggest. Phenotypic diversity appears to be more complex and not entirely explained by evolutionary processes. This reinforces the creationist view that these traits are part of genetic diversity and ancestry, intentionally designed without necessarily being linked to climatic or environmental adaptations. It's interesting to note that many questions arise about whether cold weather was responsible for this evolutionary characteristic seen among East Asian peoples. After all, Europeans, who also faced cold climates, developed light skin, but do not have epicanthic folds like Asians do. The same question applies to several Middle Eastern populations where the climate is extremely hot Yet these peoples did not develop dark skin like Africans. If we analyze further, we find peoples in the Middle East, such as the Medes, Persians, Arabs and Bedouins, as well as Berbers in North Africa, who do not have dark skin like Africans nor epicanthic folds. This raises doubts about the connection between climate and physical evolution, since there is not always a clear correlation. Many evolution scholars also find gaps in these explanations, when we observe the ethnic and geographic distribution of this physical trait, we see that epicanthic folds appear more frequently in specific ethnicities, such as East, Southeast, Central and Northern Asians, as well as Polynesians, Micronesians and indigenous peoples of the Americas who are descendants of East Asians. Interestingly, some African peoples, such as the Khoisan, Nilotic and some Cushitic groups also exhibit these characteristics. One theory suggests that the descendants of Sin and Togarma may have intermingled, which could have given rise to this physical trait. We know that East Asian peoples, Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, and Mongolians are primarily descended from Sin, son of Canaan. Additionally, Togarma is considered an ancestor of some of these peoples, as well as of certain Turkish populations who also possess epicanthic folds. Therefore, in summary, 
we can state that this trait is not evolutionary, but rather an ethnic and ancestral inheritance. In other words, East Asian peoples, such as the Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, and Mongolians, and also indigenous peoples of the Americas, have this physical trait due to their ancestry, not as a result of evolution, but because their ancestors already carried this genetic trait. Furthermore, this characteristic is also found in some African populations. It's worth noting that Sin was the son of Canaan, and Canaan was the brother of Cush, which suggests that this trait might have been present in Ham's lineage. Thank you to everyone who watched the video this far. Let me know in the comments whether you lean more towards biblical creationism, based on genetics and ancestry, or if you follow the path of evolutionism. May God bless you and see you soon.